Now, lastly, for this um, brain structure argument, make note that LeVay himself was a homosexual, okay? So it's no surprise that he observed. People who think gays and lesbians are born that way are more likely to support gay rights. In a Newsweek article, LeVay was quoted as saying, this is from him, I felt if I didn't find any differences in the hypothalamus, I would give up, science, I would give up a scientific career altogether. End quote. Now, given how poorly twisted LeVay's data are and his own personal bias, his abandonment of science may have ultimately been of greater service. Dragging LeVay into the next argument of brain plasticity, he failed to acknowledge that the brain is not as hardwired as people once thought. The brain is made up of a plastic-like material that can shape, bend, mold, and reorganize itself making new connections and or remodel them and stuff of the sort. Given that we know today that the brain exhibits plasticity, one must ask if the act of living homosexual lifestyle itself may be responsible for the differences LeVay noted. Commenting on brain plasticity, Gordon M. Shepard of the book Neurobi Neurobiology noted, the inability, the inability to generate new neurons might imply that the adult nervous system is a static hardwired machine, but this is far from the truth. Although new neurons cannot be generated, each neuron retains the ability to form new processes and new synaptic connections. Now information such as this, which the neurons um, ability to generate within certain areas of the brain must be considered where examining comparative anatomical experiments such as LeVay's. Uh, these cortical rearrangements that occurred are not as simple as unplugging a lamp and plugging it into another socket, no. The changes observed by researchers indicate that if the brain were re represented by a home electrical system then many of the wires within the walls would have to be pulled out rewired to different connections to different rooms, new outlets would appear, and some wouldn't even carry different some would even carry different voltages. Due to the colossal connectivity that takes place within the brain, any rewiring is, by its very nature, going to have uh, an effect on several areas such as INAH, which I gave the ex uh, what that meant earlier. Um, scientists understood these things, yet LeVay's work is still mentioned as alleged support for the so-called gay gene. So people, please stop lying and, and using this raggedy argument about the, the brain structure because clearly we have a, a plethora of scientists here that disagree with his work and have debunked it. Ah, the twin study. This is self-refutable in the several inconclusive and contradicting findings for the different groups including identical or monozygotic twins, fraternal or dizygotic twins, adoptive brothers, and non-twin biological siblings. Uh, also make note of the female version of this of the table that I'm showing. Now, while the authors acknowledge some of the flaws with their research, they still were quoted in Science News as saying, this is a quote from them, our research shows, the male sexual shows that male sexual orientation is substantially genetic. End quote. Now, however, the most glaring observation is that clearly not 100% of the identical twins inherited homosexuality. If there was, in fact, a gay gene, then all of the identical twins should have reported a homosexual orientation, which they did not. In almost half of the twins studies studied, one brother was not homosexual. Um, Y'all know I'm bad with pronouncing names, so I'll guess. Neil Rich, I know I got that wrong, and colleagues pointed out, this is a quote from them, the biological brothers and adoptive brothers showed approximately the same rates this latter observation suggests that there is no genetic component, but rather an environmental component shared in families. If there was, in fact, a genetic factor in this trend, the results would, ha would be the polar opposite. William Bine and Bruce Parsons of the book Human Sexual Orientation both note, this is a quote from the book, 
However, the concordance rates for homosexuality in non-twin biological brothers was only 9.2, significantly lower than that required by simple gen genetic hypothesis, which on the basis of shared genetic material would predict similar concordance rates for dizygotic twins and non-twin biologic brothers. Furthermore, the fact that the concordance rates were similar for non-twin biologic brothers, 9.2 in genetic unrelated adaptive brothers, 11, is at odds with the simple genetic hypothesis which would predict a higher concordance rates for biological siblings. Uh, end quote. So, even in a more recent study by King and McDonald in 1992, the rates were significantly lower than the ones presented by Bailey and Pillard in comparison of the monozygotic concordance rates, including bisexuals, 25%, with the comparable figures from Bailey's and Pillard's, 52%. So, methodology also plays a crucial role on the results, for example. Bailey and Pillard did not study a random sample of homosexuals. Instead, what they did is subjects were recruited through advertisements placed in homosexual publications. This method can be deemed questionable because it is highly dependent on the readership of those publications and the motives of those who respond. Thus, it may be led to skewed results, for example. Inflation, inflated rates of concordance in identical twins owing to prefer, uh, preferential participation. So, uh, once again, we have an example of bias. So, in conclusion, Ruth Hubbard and Elijah Wald commented, The fact that fraternal twins of gay men were roughly twice as likely to be gay as other biological brothers shows the envir that environmental factors are involved. Since fraternal twins are no more similar biologically than our other biological brothers, that is, so if being a fraternal twin exerts an environmental influence, it does not seem surprising that this should be even truer for identical twins, who the world thinks of as the same and treats accordingly, and who often share those feelings of sameness. Two years after LeVay's twisted and biased study was presented, a group led by Dean H. Hammer, I hope that's his name, uh, of the National Cancer Institution, Institute allegedly linked male homosexuality to a gene on the X chromosome. His team investigated 114 families of homosexual men. Hammer and his colleagues collected family history information from 76 gay male individuals and 40 gay brother pairs as they searched for incidences of homosexuality among relatives of gay men. In many families, gay men had gay relatives through... Uh, maternal lines. Thus they concluded that a gene for homosexuality might be found on the X chromosome, which is passed from the mother alone. They then used DNA linkage analysis in an effort to find a correlation between inheritance and homosexual orientation. Now, because many of the families with a prevalence of homosexual relatives had a common set of DNA markers on the X chromosome, Hammer's group assumed a genetic ideology. Of the 40 pairs of homosexual brothers he, an he analyzed, Ammer found that 33 exhibited a matching DNA region called Q28, a gene located at the tip of the long arm of the X chromosome. In summarizing their findings, Hammer and, and colleagues noted, Our experiment suggests that a locus related to sexual orientation lies within approximately 4 million base pairs of DNA on the tip of the long arm of the X chromosome. This discovery prompted Hammer and his colleagues to speculate, speculate. The linkage to markers on XQ28, the subtle, the subtle meric um, region of the long arm of the sex chromosome, had a multi-point LOD score of 4.0, indicating a statistical confidence level of more than 99% that at least one subtype of male sexual orientation is genetically influenced. It is important to note that Hammer did not claim to have found a gay gene or even that the set of genes that might contribute to a propensity for homosexuality. 